Before we get started, if you're enjoying this content, you can do us a favor by subscribing to our YouTube channel and ringing the bell. That'll let the algorithm know that you like this content and it will help us produce more. What makes businesses successful is far more about how you operate your business, what you prioritize, and how you project manage your team and your time. Welcome to Honest Ecommerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honesty Commerce. Today, I'm welcoming to the show Charles Titchener the Fourth. He is yeah. one of the most regarded Facebook experts out there, Instagram as well. Welcome to the show, Charlie. Thanks for having me, man. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited. We've been chopping it up on the internet. I can't wait to put this on camera and help some people be more successful. Reduce that stress, increase that income. Why not work less and be more successful? That's generally what people need to be doing. Absolutely. So... Uh, first and foremost, I, you know, I don't think that you woke up one day and said, I want to be a Facebook marketer. So uh, how'd you end up here? I mean, I've lived a couple of lives. I will say that I ended up getting a job at my first agency in Los Angeles um, because I had to move to LA because the Hulk Hogan sex tape ruined my radio career. Um, on Sirius XM because Hulk Hogan and Howard Stern were the funders of the radio station. And uh, when, you know, you have sex with the boss's wife and he films it and then you sue him, it's a bit of a mess. That all being said, uh, I got a job at the first agency in LA and I basically automated all my work, did the work of like the entire department. Within three months, I got let go because last hired, first fired. Bought some of the accounts that they had with me, started another agency, ended up on AMC's show, The Pitch, uh, which was like the reality show that occurred after Mad Men. Um, it was on for two seasons. Uh, they put me on the last episode of season two, immediately canceled the show. Well, they realized their mistake as soon as I got on the air. Um, but we won the business with 100 Flowers. Um, and then that agency, that was about 90 days after we started that agency. Um, and then again, got let go basically, uh, on that one because my VC was also my attorney and, uh, he signed the paperwork and he set up paperwork in a certain way that you just take it from me and started another thing. And I have my biggest client fire me in 2013 because he put a hundred bucks in the Facebook ads and he's like, I got more out of this hundred bucks and I paid you 2000 a month for it. Now we're still friends, but he's just like, I just don't need to work with you anymore. So licked my wounds. And the next day I put my credit card into Facebook and started promoting my band. And within three months I was running paid media for Jamba Juice and Viking River Cruises and stuff at their AOR. And within three months, six months of that, I was doing stuff for, uh, was running all the paid media for Robert Rodriguez movies and Jay and Silent Bob and some anti-smoking stuff uh, for his agency that was on Vine. And uh, the, the, you know, the old like video social media network, but we had a, they had a like, paid media arm. Yeah. Um, and then nine months from that moment, uh, I was a supervisor at Omnicom. Spending like a million dollars a day for CBS, Nissan, Activision, Levi's, brands like that, Henkel. Um, and the beautiful part about that was I got the Facebook side of the business and they were basically starting that division. And there was one Facebook rep for everybody west of the Mississippi River, which it sounds like it's unbelievable. There's only one person for it, although... You have to remember that at the time, that basically meant that there was 20 people advertising at the agency level at that time. Like big, big people. There was less than 100 folks. And um, so I just got to basically be there from the beginning of how Facebook worked. We were talking dollar CPMs uh, before interest groups existed, before the pin uh, pixel existed. And so I just every time I came to the office, we'd go out for two, three days, chop it up help build out the engineering team, the product team, the messenger team, the data team. And 
Uh, I just basically was the right guy at the right time with the right background, a bit of computer science. I had an MBA, very entrepreneurial. And uh, I just, yeah, it, just, it was just a matter of luck and opportunity and preparation. And uh, since then, I've just been basically at the forefront of everything that Facebook does. I, I launched the very first lead gen ad. It was actually for Nissan to try to put, uh, set up test drives. Fun fact, we it talk it was 50 bucks to get a lead on the very first lead gen ad. One out of every two leads would show up to a dealership and buy a car that was $25,000. So if you're doing the math at home, that's a 250X ROAS on an alpha on a lead gen ad. Now, ROAS is complete nonsense, but like that was fun, right? I also did the first DPA ads with Macy's. Um, where we had to pay this like Australian agency 50 grand to set up a Excel spreadsheet of, uh, every single line item for every single variant of every single product that they had on their store. And just between them and Disney and, uh, progressive insurance and I mean, MGM hotels, the, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. But I've just been lucky enough to kind of be there at the forefront of everything because. I was the first guy in a room and everybody was still running Gemini and Yahoo ads. Uh, shout out to Yahoo ad experts. I don't know where you are anymore, but like, hopefully you still got a gig. Uh, and I've just been there with that was the thing to do. And, you know, I was 10 years ago, basically. So I, I've just had this luxury of spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for other people and driving well over a billion in revenue, like designing Apple's e com and D 2 C efforts, and it's just been a fun ride. I, I, I uh, I've also had the luxury of getting let go or being forced out at a lot of agencies because I don't, I don't necessarily work well in an office environment because I listen to loud music. I'd come in in cowboy boots and band t shirts and ripped up jeans. And I would like leave early if I got my work done, which if you're at an agency and you leave before the sun goes down, like you're a scoundrel and a lazy person. But I found my right fit, which was more D to C teaching and growth and what I've learned building seven, eight, nine figure businesses is just kind of what brought me here over the last few years of training agencies and multi million dollar brands. I couldn't be happier. Absolutely. And and I've been following uh, Charlie on Twitter. And we'll make sure to link to that in the show notes. CT the Disruptor on Twitter. I've been following him for a while. Him and I you know, have been in each other's DMs quite a bit. And, and you have a few... These days, it kind of breaks down to, I would say, three three offerings. So you, you do take on clients these days. Uh, you know, I'm assuming they're very select people that you like to work with. Um, and then you do more kind of coaching um and, and kind of training as well uh could you you want to talk about like what those things look like for you and and honestly why is that all you do yeah great point so the taking on stuff i do like advisory board level work so like there are a few brands that i work with because they've been, i have equity in that business and i'm basically the de facto cmo as a partner um, one of those businesses is uh, under outfit, a uh, uh, shapewear brand. Um, they did 200000 a month the, the in spend uh, and revenue. They're about to break even more or less each month because they just keep growing. They did about 200000 a month before I was brought on. Six months later, we did $1.2 um, So I have, a, I, have a, I have a grape of a watermelon from them, and, and I do that. Also, there's a CBD business, a way goods business. A few of those. So I am actively doing the work every single day, especially at a much higher level, um, which I appreciate buying on, you know, every platform imaginable um, from like illicit uh, display networks to, you know, a couple million a month on Facebook. So I'm always doing stuff, which I really enjoy. Um, and then the teaching side, I, I built up what I'm building now is a thing called Disruptor School. Um, and it's built off of the first part of that is what's called the Facebook ads MBA program. And it's just an immersive teaching environment. It's not a course. There's like 10 courses. It's not a mastermind. There's an entire separate group. We have lifetime access to. It's not just group coaching. We have a weekly call every single week. And when you buy it, once you have access to that in perpetuity, there's also one on one time. There's well over a hundred hours of video, dozens of eBooks, uh, and, and lectures. 
questions and answers. And really what I'm doing is I've realized in my experience, especially over the last four or five years, since Facebook went to OCPM, which basically eliminated the idea of ABO or single posts or broad targeting or, or, or non-broad targeting, like interest groups and lookalikes and retargeting and all of that fun stuff. I've realized that 80 to 90% of the people that are currently entrepreneurial that have been let down by agencies over and over again, or media buyers that are trying to start their own thing, or people that work at agencies, how they learn how to do Facebook generally comes from somebody who's been overworked, underpaid, and poorly trained by somebody else who wasn't good. And so there's this systemic lack of expertise and confidence and success and understanding. And I found that, I mean, my bread's buttered. You know what I mean? Like, I'm good. What would I do if I didn't have, if I didn't have to do anything in the world? And I was like, do anything I wanted. I, I'd play music and I would teach people how to be successful. And so, like, my band has a gig tomorrow night. We got a gig this weekend. Like, we play all the time. But also, I do this other thing that's the flagship product of the Facebook Ads MBA program. But basically, I'm taking folks from day one or, you know, year five to 90th, 95th percentile. And it's not just media buying because media buying is something, if you're running a Facebook ads for your business, you should not be spending more than two or three hours a week max actually doing any work for those Facebook ads. So the rest of it is project and team and time management for profit and for insight and for growth. So a lot of what I'm really doing is basically CMO development. You know, a lot of my people come in, they get hired, you know, the people that are media buyers get hired as you know, the Facebook guy or girl and end up being the de facto CMO of the business. You know, they're, they're looking to make sure that they can just buy Facebook ads and be okay. And then their 20 hour, 30 hour work week gets crunched down to an hour every couple of days and they start building out the rest of their skill set. Um, and I'm just passing on what I've learned from one of my bosses was, Vice President of Guthy Ranker. She's literally the person that invented the but wait, there's more tagline in an infomercial. Her name is Marina Randolph, rock star. I've had a lot of bosses just like that, right? One of my old bosses was the guy that uh, built classmates in reunion.com. And he has a new SaaS product. We brought him to a nine-figure monthly. I had a seven-figure monthly profit target on paid media with him. Um, and it was great. We had like, I've just been around so many really great people that have been a proven track record. And so what makes businesses successful is far more about how you operate your business, what you prioritize and how you project manage your team and your time. So since media buying is a line item on somebody's responsibility, something that takes I spend more time walking my dogs than media buying. And I spend on a brand where I spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars a day. So when you have that perspective, you can start to use the rest of that time to start developing the business and grow it. Because why am I only getting 50 grand a day? Why isn't it 100? What's busted in the business? Let's fix that. And so I can teach people that stuff. And what I've found from that is my biggest focus is how do I help create jobs? How do I help create happiness and put, you know, food on people's tables and put money in their pocket to do life-changing stuff. And for me, like when I started to make that my focus a few years ago, I've got people all around the world that are just seeing that success. I had a student, Yash, who was in India, had like a Kyocera smartphone, right? Not a Google, not an iPhone, nothing of that sort. He was making like 50 bucks a month media buying for like American companies. And they were paying peanuts and he was stoked on it. We went through stuff and about nine months afterwards, he was making like five grand a month. So like he bought his entire family a house, you know, like that is amazing. Uh, I mean, I just, I have stories like that forever. And the fact that I can take something that people think that know that they need to do, but it's completely overwhelming and they're confused and there's so much mis information and competing ideas and everybody's got like their version of success. What I try to do is just say, we can worry about what works for you, but let's just establish some empirical fact, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's establish like some hardcore facts based on empirical data that are inarguable 
and build a strategy that works for you off of that. And basically 80, 90% of that is the same for everybody. And the fact that I now have a community of folks around the world that have all gone through that, they're all helping each other is, is just amazing. Like every single day I get like life-changing stuff and I, I would just much rather do that than try to run a brand where I have to have calls with Taiwan at three o'clock in the morning about shipping. Right. I just don't want to do that anymore. Right. And I, I also don't want to worry about writing big reports so that every time my phone calls are just, please don't fire me. Here's a row. I was like, I know how nonsense that is. And I've done that at levels where like the executive is running a nine figure business. I just, I just don't need that anymore. And so now I get to take my opportunity of really just teaching people. And I'm super excited that that's moving into what we call disruptor school where I'm actually bringing in the world's best thinkers and spots. Because what I found is the majority of the people that are really popular, the majority of the people that have a big following and that engage on stage and speak all the time, very rarely do those people have any clue what they're doing. They're definitely not the best person in the room with the job. The smartest people in the room are five steps ahead of them. So I've worked with those smartest people. And the problem is they don't know how to teach. So what I've done is I've standardized. I basically, I forgot who it was, but it says like, if you want to get successful, turn yourself into software. I forgot who that was. Um, please check that. If you know this is like comment below, like what that was, because I really want to remember so I can quote this person accurately. Please, internet, help me. You're undefeated so far. Help me out. But if you can turn yourself into software, then you'll be really successful. And so basically what I've done is I've gone out to like the COO of Warby Parker, right? Or, and the, or the world's best like uh, consumer psychologists or brand positioning experts. And I basically found a way to take their knowledge through a standardized flow that's basically like a what you see is what you get software kind of thinking, a fill in the blanks. And now I can take their knowledge out of their head and make it available for other folks. And so Disruptor School is just going to have a bunch of these instructors that are all best in class, but you could, you'll never see them on stage and you could never book them for their time because they're like, with the consumer psychologist, it's 20 grand a month to like have her answer the phone. No one's ever going to be able to do that, but you could take 15, 20 minutes of her time that'll make a seven figure difference in your business. Why not make that readily accessible to people? And so I, I, I'm going to do that. And honestly, I'll be completely straight up. I think that the middling ad agency business model that we've seen grow, especially since 2018, 2019, when people say Facebook was easy and now it's hard, but they also were set up against the backdrop of a 10 year booming economy. And now we don't see that. And the way to be successful in Facebook isn't to make a report where you can lie to your clients. You actually have to be good at business. That middling agency model is effectively obsolete. And if I can basically put out of, if I can change, if I can undermine all of the people that are liability for people's success and instead make that success far easier for people to achieve for themselves or have a catalog of folks who are excellent for bespoke support, I'll do that all day because my inbox is full every day, like dozens or hundreds of messages sometimes of people who are on their fourth agency and it's just not working. And it breaks my heart to know that people have to give up on their dreams and that, like it's costing people jobs and happiness because they're trying to build a business and some agency that legitimately doesn't care about them has put some 24 year old kid that's never run a business on the account of that that kid's being overworked and underpaid and he's poorly trained. And that person's future is put in the hands of somebody that has no conception of how their business is run and they're taught to value things that don't make any difference to the bottom line. And that to me is, that's tragic. And I've been able to turn those people around. Um, and that's what, that's what, that's what I'm kind of doing now. And it's sort of, it sounds altruistic. Believe me, it costs money. I'm doing okay. But like I get to make the world a better place and I get to create jobs and happiness and I think that is not aligned with what I did when I was running and training ad agencies around the world. Absolutely. So these days, you're looking more to make impacts on the individual level, you know, change that freelancer's 
life and help him be more valuable to his clients in turn changing those clients lives yeah absolutely and to be fair like i get to see it every day i mean i i had some people over at my house this weekend this one guy jared was a graphic designer and he's he heard me on clubhouse like two years ago because i was like a big clubhouse nerd for a minute and he went from a graphic designer working at a kayak company to now he's hiring his brother to work at his agency. And he's like one of the best, one of the best Facebook designers in the world for if you have outdoor vertical high ticket items and you're trying to grow your business, like he's one of the top five people I know. And I've been doing this thing for like 10 years. And like, this is a guy who was, I like to call him affectionately as like a Photoshop jockey. And now he's, He literally runs the media for 80% of the kayaks sold in America. And he also does like, we have, we have one client, we have one student inside the MBA program. That's not one of his clients. Uh, is this guy, uh, Carl that runs this, uh, fly fishing company called Epic fly rods, 800, $1,200, like bespoke fly fishing rods, right? Who's going to sell that? Jared will. And and he'll, he'll crush. And we just have like, that kind of thing happens all the time. I did an interview with a student yesterday, Leslie from, uh, she's from Liverpool, but she lives in Manchester. I was taught that I had to be very specific because apparently she moved to the dark side. I, I don't understand London, but apparently that's a big deal. She was like, and she described herself as Miss Corporate. And she's now starting her second business since joining last year. And she like joined to try to learn how to do it, to try to make some things work. And she was going to use her existing like vegan bakery as like her backdrop to just learn with. Having no intention to the fact that now this vegan bakery is a completely successful business and she's launching something else. So I'm turning like serial entrepreneurs out of people that had like day jobs. And like, I asked her about it and like, how is she going? She's like, like, are you less stressed? She's like, I don't even have stress. Like, I don't even think about it anymore. Like, this is easy. It's fun. And I just get to go do what I want to do. And it's sort of just this like, if I get that every day, why not keep doing it, right? Like, it's just amazing. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy that. And also what I love about it is that because I'm exposed to so many people all the time, I get these problem-solving efforts of repairing people's ad accounts and their businesses. And it's funny, um, all those, like, talking head folks that I was talking about before, a lot of them run agencies, a lot of their clients come become students of mine. I know how they run their accounts. I know their gaps. I know how they're doing things. I know their communication. I know their strategies. I know their like internal information because I've seen everything that they do. And I've heard multiple, multiple students complain about that person or this business or that. And I fixed it. So when I come to talk to people about how to be successful, I can directly speak to this is how the person who's managing your account was doing it. I know because I've run, I've helped like a dozen people that have also worked with that person and now they're successful. And that's not to say ill of anybody else, but it means that while I'm personally running a couple million dollars a month in just Facebook media, I'm also seeing folks the fifty, hundred thousand dollar a day level and like getting in there and repairing their thinking and repairing their accounts and repairing their priorities and project management skills. And the turnaround is, I mean, they make progress in the first week and in the first couple of months, like their lives are totally different. And I just love it. Like that's, it's, it's fun. I, I enjoy it. I mean, believe me, the businesses I work with pay the bills, all this other stuff is just fun. And it's just like setting up my family for, for me. And to be completely honest, like I got a monkey on my back too. Like 10 years ago, I was a, I was a, I was a junkie for 10 years as a touring, like punk musician, radio personality. I got sober. I know the difference between like, am I going to get dope today or food? Like I've had that conversation with myself for years. And now my biggest problem is like the pool in my backyard is a month and a half late. Like I'm I'm doing okay. And I just want other people to be that happy and that confident and that successful because you deserve it. Absolutely. You've been talking a lot about mindset uh, through... It's a theme that's ran through kind of all of your answers today. So if people are interested in kind of learning more from you 
uh, or maybe potentially checking out these programs, where should they go? What should they do? Best place to go is FacebookDisruptor.com or DisruptorSchool.com or just DM me. Um, I'm not shy. I'm probably too active on social media. Uh, but I respond to every DM. I respond to every comment. I respond to every, you know, reply and tweet and everything. It's time consuming, but I care. Like if you, if you take the effort to put yourself out there to ask a question, I want to make sure that you get that respect. Um, and it also helps me understand where people are at. Like if you don't understand something, let me know. And that I found that when one person is willing to ask, there's a thousand other people that wanted to ask that question. And so please, if you are interested or you're struggling or you're just not confident with stuff, if you reach out to me, I can give you an answer. I can steer you in the right direction. I can ask you the questions that you should be asking yourself to help solve those problems. And if you need any additional help or resources, I've got a newsletter that goes out every week. I have a new ebook that comes out every week and other education resources for the right fit for you. Um, and some of them are small investments, some of them are much larger. But if you feel like the opportunity cost of not asking, of being frustrated, of not getting things together for yourself is one that is too high and you wanna just fundamentally change things, um, that's what I'm here for. And I only teach what I currently do. And it's built off of my decade of experience of basically being on the extreme cutting edge of what's going on. And I will say this, you don't have to listen to me. You can hear what I teach from other people. It's just what I'm teaching, you're not going to hear from them for a year or two. I've been seeing that for half a dozen years now. And that's a cocky thing to say, but I'll back it up. Like, I'm starting to see folks talking about, well, we're going to run, we're going to stop doing a test and a scale campaign. We're going to do this one campaign thing. That's my case study from 2019. I've got ebooks on it, case studies on it, $200 million spent developing it. I just see that stuff all the time. And I'm really excited to see more and more people adopt broad, which I've been talking about since 2018. Dynamic creatives, 2019 case studies, 2020 best practices. So my point to all of that is, um, I'm just trying to be helpful to folks. My DMs are always open. If you want to know more, go to facebookdisruptor.com. And I just want folks to know that you do deserve to be successful. And if you're not confident right now, maybe the reason that you're not successful or that things aren't working isn't you and your tenacity. It might be because the people that you're trusting to teach you how to get there aren't good enough. And what I've found in my experience is you're only as good as the company you keep. You can work, you can be the hardest working person in the room. But if you're working for somebody that doesn't care about you or that's teaching the wrong things, you're never going to achieve your potential. And I think you deserve better. So that's what I'm here for. That and playing rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Charlie. Uh, you've shared so much wisdom on this podcast. We'll make sure to link to all the stuff that you mentioned down below. Everyone go check them out. Make sure to give them a follow on Twitter. Charlie, we'll definitely have you on again in the future. Dive deeply into some of these kind of Facebook uh, specifics that you were talking about. Uh, but again, I can't thank you enough for coming on today. Oh, thank you so much, man. Yeah, and I would I would love to. Believe me, I, I could I could talk about this stuff so I'm blue in the face. I, I really appreciate it. I, I <laughs> when my buddies came over this weekend, it was like a triple well get together. We went to a Dodgers game. I had somebody two rows back yell at me about after four innings to please shut up because apparently I was teaching 20 people around me about direct to consumer. And uh, like, I just can't, it, this, is, this is what I do. So I would love to share with anybody at any time, anything I can do to be, be of help. And I appreciate you giving me this platform to share it. And um, we'll just continue to be, we're now tweeps that have talked and seeing each other, we're going to have to be in the same room sooner than that. Internet strangers. Sooner yeah. than later. Exactly. It's, it's, it's funny how the world works. Right? It's funny how that all happens. Uh, especially now getting to see more and more people that I've only ever seen on the internet for years. It's fun. I got brunch with them. It's a good thing. Absolutely. Next time, we'll now we'll be like, oh, you're taller than I thought. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met some guy, he was like, you're going to be really surprised when you find out I'm like 6'10". <laughs> it was, we, we meet every Friday. You can't really tell. Yeah, with yeah. The, no, mind you, he was pulling my leg. He was 5'8". Can't really tell with just the, the, the talking heads, the internet stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, by the way, for what it's worth, Nick Shackelford is more ripped in person than he looks like on the internet. Uh, I made the mistake of saying yes to go do a workout with him at 730. For those that don't know, he used to be like a professional athlete. Like LA Galaxy, uh, doing CrossFit with him on the beach with a couple of professional athletes. It took me like a week to walk right again, but I did feel like I hung, I hung. I wasn't as good, but I, I it was. <laughs> there's some really nice people out there. There's some really, really nice people out there. And I suggest everybody make the point of trying to have a face to face conversation with as many of the people that you see on the internet, because words are only words, but when you actually get to talk to folks, they're. You're going to find some really, really nice people. You might disagree on everything, but could be really good friends. And I've had more and more of that lately. And uh, I love it. So, Chase, I really appreciate it, man. Um, I know you got to go. And just, again, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you on the internet, dude. Absolutely. We'll be back on the DMs, dude. Take care so much. See you, buddy. All right. I can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own business. You can find all the links in the show notes. Make sure you head over to honestecommerce.co to check out all of the other amazing content that we have. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review. And obviously, if you're thinking about growing your business, check out our agency at electriceye.io. Until next time.